international writers that come together and come up with those rankings. Those are the ones I trust. How close is Roberto Garcia to getting in that top ten? Very close. Matter of fact, I think if Garcia wins this fight tonight, there's a really big fight on the horizon for him. This is his third consecutive fight on ESPN. I mean, I said it earlier. People that fight on ESPN, it opens up an opportunity for them to get to that bigger place. And it's happened for all the years we've had Friday night fights, and I think it's about to happen for Garcia. But he has to get past a guy that can bang with the right hand and a guy who's desperate to win himself. And a guy in Prescott who has two wins over world champions. Bradis Prescott told us that there's really no secret to Roberto Garcia's style. He's going to try and back me up against the ropes. We're ready for it. We know how to counter it. And we're very confident we can be successful tonight. Again, what you see is what you get. Garcia, what you see is a guy looking to establish control early on. Come forward. Cover up well. Look to get into that body. Loves to attack that body. Just loves to bring the steam. And Prescott, well, he's doing what he's got to do. He's got a good game plan early on. Let's see if he can keep it up as the pressure comes. Prescott wants to use those legs, stay on the outside, use the jab, and look for spots to land that right hand. 18 of Prescott's first 20 victories were by knockout, but since he's moved up a couple weight classes, that power really hasn't gone up with him. Just has one knockout in the last four years. Yeah, you talk about size here. Let me put numbers to it. Prescott, much smaller. You just talked about it. He has fought career as a lightweight and a junior welterweight as low as 134, Todd. Only moved up to welterweight his last fight. Garcia has been a junior middleweight and welterweight his entire career. His heaviest at 160 and the lightest for Garcia, 145. So he's the bigger guy. If you're the bigger guy, that usually translates into you wanting to get close. Garcia wants to get close. Garcia took 17 months off, rededicated him to the sport, rededicated himself to the sport. He's won four in a row since that layoff, seven in a row overall, has not lost since May of 2010. He knows how important tonight is. I know you believe he's on the cusp of perhaps getting a big shot, a title shot perhaps. Garcia knows that as well. Can't just win tonight, needs to look impressive. But that's the only way Garcia knows how. The Prescott's been knocked out only one time, but he was knocked out by Mike Alvarado, a strong, aggressive guy, just like Garcia. And to me, if Alvarado was too strong and aggressive for him, maybe Garcia will be too. You know that old saying? Stop, 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 stop. Oh, there's a little slip down there. The referee saw it. He's going to clean the gloves and get them started again. Prescott's complaining that Garcia's holding him behind the head and pushing him down. Well, I'll tell you something about Garcia. You know, he's been involved in... Save that thought, Ted. We're back here on Friday Night Fights. Todd Grisham, Teddy, Atlas Ringside. Teddy, you were saying? Well, just before that bell snuck up on us, or at least snuck up on me, you know, you had brought out a good point that Prescott was complaining about Garcia pushing him down behind the neck. In other words, doing some things that are not allowed. Garcia has been involved in a lot of things that are not allowed. To be quite honest with you, he's been penalized for headbutts. He's been penalized for low blows. And mostly, he's been penalized for taking his left forearm and using it to shove you off. His elbow and his forearm on the inside, he likes to get room. And you can look for that tonight if he gets inside. He'll take that forearm if the referee is not an eye shot of it, and he'll shove you a little bit. He's a rough guy. He's a rough character. And he fights rough. And he throws left hook. Everyone in his corner are wearing jackets that say the last throwback fighter. Did you see Roberto Garcia being successful back in the 50s and 60s? There were a lot of good fighters back in those days, but he would fit in as far as being mentally tough because those guys, they fought often and they were mentally tough. You know, there were a lot of clubs back in those days, a lot more clubs than in the United States now. 
those guys could get a lot more experience and develop a lot faster and had to be mentally tough to handle that kind of activity. You can see Garcia smile every time Prescott lands a punch. It's almost like Garcia needs to be woken up with a couple punches to get his fire lit. Garcia would love this to turn into just an all-out brawl. That's where he excels. You know, I talked about Garcia being penalized for some fouls. Prescott's been penalized for low blows. And also, Prescott has been cut by head clashes. Garcia, well, you're probably not surprised to hear me say that he's been involved in some head clashes. Just look at his style. I mean, he comes in there with his head. He had a no decision from a head clash. He's been cut before from head clashes, Garcia. So you never know if you're going to see red in this main event. Prescott with a five-inch reach advantage. He's two inches taller as well. See, Prescott went down kind of fast, almost like in the NFL, you know, you, you take a fair catch. He went down really fast there. That was planned. His corner, I guarantee you, has told him in preparation for this fight that Garcia gets inside, he leans on you a little bit. Don't fight it. Go down. They're probably thinking if you fight against that lean, you're going to tire yourself out. So you can see Prescott is following those orders. Garcia gets inside, pushes on him a little bit. He just goes with it. That jab is what Prescott is concentrating on, and a little separation. Staying away from the stronger guy. I talked about it, of course, my truck backed me up. There you can see exactly what I talked about. Garcia gets inside. Prescott leans a little bit. Garcia pushes down on his neck and back. And you can see Prescott just giving in, going down, taking that fair catch, as we talked about earlier, not pushing up against Garcia. And I'm sure the corner has instructed him in doing that so he doesn't tire himself out. Prescott said his team had a plan. They know how one-dimensional Roberto Garcia can be at times. Perhaps that was part of the plan, as you mentioned, Ted. I'm sure it is. He's done it twice already. A left hook lands there from Garcia. Again, anything Prescott's going to do, there's a low blow warning. What did I say last round? Prescott has been penalized for low blow, and he just got warned for a low blow a moment ago. Prescott just turned southpaw now. Garcia can switch over if he wants to, too. He knows how. He also knows how to throw bombs, and that's what he's throwing right now. Garcia coming in again. There's an old shot. Well, there's that push off, and there's that old saying, Todd. Pressure breaks pipes. And that's what Garcia is bombing on, that the pressure will break Prescott. In Garcia's fight against Victor Cayo, you predicted a six-round stoppage. You were right. What's your prediction for this fight? I think it's going the distance. If anything, Garcia, maybe that pressure gets to him and stop Prescott, maybe in the last round. Well, hang out with us. Good theater unfolding. Todd Grisham and Teddy Atlas here at the UIC Pavilion in Chicago, Illinois. This is our main event. Roberto Garcia and Prescott going down again. Yeah, that, again, that's preordained. You know, they, they got that in the head of Prescott in training camp. That's why he's going down so fast. They got the 
jab in the head of Prescott, too, that he needs to use it. If he's going to have any chance of surviving this pressure, keeping this pressure off him a little bit. Prescott has a new manager. Lazaro Garcia, it's their first fight together. Prescott said he's giving me a new mental attitude. We changed things up. I never feel, I've never felt better. You know, they sold stock. I don't know, you played the stock market? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, give me a tip later. If, if they sold stock on body punching, I tell you, Garcia, he could cash in. Because he really, really dedicates himself to going downstairs. When you go to the body, later on you want to set up the head. Right here, the right hand to the body by Garcia. Left hook to the head, just missed. But it shows you what's in the mind of Garcia. Go downstairs and then try to catch him upstairs. Roberto Garcia signed with Al Heyman recently. Heyman's getting quite the stable of fighters. Is that something you would encourage your fighter to do? Sign with someone who's getting so many fighters under contract? Are you signed with Al Heyman? Because you're we're the only, the only we're guy. You're the only guy. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. You're the only guy in, within any parameter of the ring side that's not signed up with him. Um, listen, Al Heyman does a good job. I mean, he, he gets maximum money for his fighters. He gets them on network. He's got the connections. To do that, you want to move forward in this business. There's a few places you go to move forward. He's one of those places. But could Garcia perhaps get lost in the shuffle with so many other fighters under his banner? Not so far. It's a good question because you're going to need more places to put all those fighters. But so far, so good. Let's take a look at Teddy's scorecard through three rounds here on Friday Night Fights in our main event. He's got it two rounds to one, Garcia. As for those of you scoring on our Friday Night Fights Facebook page, and we encourage you to do so if you're not currently, they've got it three rounds to none for Bradis Prescott. I guess they don't appreciate body punching and pressure. Look, I appreciate when you put pressure, that doesn't automatically win you around. It's got to be what I call effective pressure, effective aggression. But I think I saw effective aggression, particularly the last round, as Garcia was banging that drum, going downstairs. This round, the better round for Prescott, getting some space and getting those hands off when there's some space. Both fighters have been warned for different violations. Garcia for pushing Prescott down, Prescott for landing low blows, but no points have yet been taken. But don't be surprised to see something at some point. Well, talking about points, I'm gonna segue on that. I'm going to say the point here tonight is two points. Can Prescott handle the pressure and get things done on the outside when he needs to? And can Garcia keep up the pressure all night long? He's going to have to keep it up. In other words, is he in condition to do it? The left hook lands as Prescott goes back to the ropes. And there's that pushing and shoving from Garcia. You know, I worked in the WWE for a while, and Prescott's doing pretty well at selling that push down, even though it's probably not as hard as he wants you to believe. Yeah, if this was the World Cup, you'd probably see a yellow flag for flopping. <laughs> or yellow card, yes. <laughs> yellow card, I'm sorry. They have yellow flags, too, there, the linesman. You're on it. So round four comes to a close here in our main event. How do you have it scored? Jump on our Friday Night Fights Facebook page now. Welcome back, back into Friday Night Fights. We're entering round five, almost halfway done. It's our main event, Roberto Garcia and Bredis Prescott. Garcia, 35 and three, seven straight victories. Thanks a win tonight. We'll get him perhaps a title shot, if not one step closer. Prescott hopes to get back to the point he was a few years ago after knocking out Amir Khan. He was the buzz of the boxing world. Feels a few more wins. And he can once again be getting big time shots at, at money, if not a title somewhere down the road. But again, one step at a time, win this fight first. Exactly. And to win this fight first, Prescott understands very clearly what he needs to do. Use those legs, keep distance, keep separation for the biggest, stronger guy. And pot shot when you have that separation. 
move those hands when you can on the outside. And of course, Garcia knows exactly what he has to do. Keep on keeping on. Just keep bringing that pressure, that steam, and bang that body. At the end of round four, Prescott landed a shot that came perhaps after the bell. That did not sit well with Garcia, who stared him down for about 20 seconds. See, Garcia, you know the chance that he gets inside to the body by bringing that pressure. But he, go, he also gets opportunities with those looping shots he likes to throw. A little bit of wide shots. Garcia gets chances to catch you as you're stepping out, as you're pulling off those ropes. And look for Garcia to catch in on those chances. Prescott pulls out every once in a while. The hand's a little loose, maybe not up all the way. Look for Garcia to go with him and catch him. That time, Garcia got caught posing after his last punch, or at least pulling back straight in the middle after his last punch. Garcia, as usual, is the aggressor in this fight. Constantly putting pressure on Prescott. You know, I talked about how Garcia has to be in top shape to keep this pressure up all night. Same ditto for Prescott. Prescott's got to be in some shape to handle this pressure, use those legs, and be able to punch in between all night long. It's been a very close fight thus far. As we come to the end of round five here, Reska told us he was excited about waiting for the bell to ring tonight so he could come out like a bull and eat Garcia alive. That, as you can tell, has not happened. Although he is hanging in there with Garcia in this welterweight showdown. And there's some late punches coming from Garcia this round. Perhaps a little receipt from what happened at the end of the prior round. Sitting ringside with Teddy Atlas, I'm Todd Grisham. Next week we head to the Little Creek Casino in Shelton, Washington as Gabriel Campillo takes on Thomas Williams Jr. Undefeated, 17-0 with 12 knockouts. That's on ESPN2, 9 o'clock Eastern time on August the 1st. Also, Andre Durrell fighting for the first time since February of 2013. Teddy, what are your early thoughts about that fight card next You know, week? I talked about tonight, and I think we've been delivering on it, that I like Garcia. I like his style. I'm a fan of his. I'm a fan of Thomas Williams Jr. I really like him. I love the fact that we're following him in his career. This guy has talent. This guy also is TV friendly. You know, he boxes more, looks to counter, but for the most part, he's aggressive. He's in there with a former world champion who, look, he's in the twilight of his career, Capillo. No doubt about it. I'm expecting Williams to get him out of there, but I'm interested to see how Williams goes about it with such an experienced guy. And I'll say it again. I'm a fan of Williams. I'm glad we're putting him on our air again. And we've got him ranked in your favorite ranking system. Yeah, transnational rankings. Well, they get it right. You know, no bias, as I said, no fat with them. You know, it's all about what you do in that square circle. And Williams has done it. Transnational has him in their top ten. This fight is getting increasingly, I don't want to use the word ugly, but it ain't pretty as the referee has been just as active as the two fighters have. Stop, 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 stop. Get back, get back, get back, get back. Get back. Garcia will complain, then Prescott will complain. Prescott lands a punch after the bell. Garcia lands a punch after the bell. Low blows, pushing, shoving. There's that forearm shove that we talked about earlier from Garcia. Tries to create space so that he can land a power punch. Stop, stop, stop. Step back, step back. Step back, step back, step back. Prescott again trying to stay moving. Yeah, but, if this was a, but if this was a poker game, it's, it's always, you see those punches a minute ago, you know, Prescott trying to keep Garcia off, here's the referee trying to keep these guys in line. I mean, you can get a little upset when you're fighting a guy like Garcia. First of all, 
you know, he's like a cheap suit. He's all over you. Doesn't leave you the heck alone. <laughs> he messes with you. You know, he's banging you around. He's hitting you with a forearm. You're not going to be in the best mood when you're in there with Garcia. But what I was saying a minute ago, if you were a poker player, you'd have to favor Garcia because you see Prescott throw those punches to kind of keep him off. They're like two pass. But then Garcia, man, he hit you with that left hook to the body, and that's three of a kind. And that beats two pass in any poker game or in any fight. And right now, I think that's what you're starting to see a little bit from Garcia. You know, he's got three of a kind to the two pair of Prescott. His shots are harder. And they're coming. And they're coming. And they're coming. Now Prescott with a couple pot shots. But they're pot shots. See, that's the point I'm making. The hardest shots, that one might have been a little low. But the hardest shots, Garcia. Hey, no punches after the bell. And Friday Night Fights is presented by Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach. And in part by Verizon, introducing XLTE. We've doubled our bandwidth in cities coast to coast. Garcia likes physicality. He enjoys punching, and I don't think he hates getting punched. But there hasn't been that much of either in this fight. We were hoping for a brawl, at least Garcia fans were, I'm sure. So far, it's been few and far between the exchanges. Are you entertained, Teddy? Yeah, I am. And as we promised the fans, this would be an action fight. Garcia knows no other way, would not have it any other way. And Prescott, there's desperation there, as we talked about. He's lost three of his last six. He's got to win here. And he's got to find a way to win with a guy who just doesn't leave you alone. Let's take a look at some scorecards. There was a low blow the referee did not see. Teddy Atlas through six rounds has it 59-55 for Roberto Garcia after giving the first round to Prescott. And for our Facebook fans, they've got it dead even, Teddy, three rounds apiece. Big overhand right there from Garcia. Wakes this crowd up a little bit. And now downstairs. And the thunder is coming. We've seen the rain. And here comes the lightning. And that's Garcia. Starting to get to you as the rounds go on. Because that pressure early sets the stage for what you're starting to see here. Or at least what Garcia wants to hope or hopes to see here. Which is that you start to get to the guy now. You know, you start to get home with some more of those big shots because of the early pressure. We asked Prescott what he needed to avoid or what concerned him the most about Garcia, and he said, I've got to keep my hands up and watch for his looping punches. We saw a couple connect moments ago. Hey, you better keep your elbows in, too. Ooh, a straight right hand got through the guard. This may be Garcia's best round so far. We're two minutes into round seven here in our main event. And yeah, one of the things keeping Prescott in here is his heart. It's also the fact that he has fought the better opposition probably overall. He has a win over a former world champion and a current world champion. And Prescott is looking for that experience, that confidence to carry him. But it's very difficult when you got a guy that doesn't let you breathe like Garcia, and he keeps banging downstairs along the way. There's that shove a little bit. And push down and then try to bring his head back up with an uppercut that missed. See, right now, Prescott doing more surviving than winning. And these are the rounds where the fans at home, for me, you got to look at this. And you got to figure this in, calculate this into your scorecard. Let's go into Redis Prescott's corner. Bernardo Asuna will translate. I want you to maintain your jab. If you use the jab, he's ready to go. He's out of distance, so he can't throw his punches if you keep him at that distance. 
Give me water. Estamos bien, estamos bien. Ese ya fue, ese ya fue. Ese ya fue. You've got to close strong. Pero mantén la distancia, no tiene que pararte. You've got to maintain your distance and your movement. Vamos. Muy bien, muy bien. You're doing well. Everything with that jab, it's got to be a strong jab. And don't stand still. That jab's going to mark the distance in this fight. Thank you, Bernardo. Somewhere along the line, they better add one little small point. It's not that small. And then you better crash your right hand in there after you use that jab, because guess what? A jab is not going to keep a beast like I see you off you all night. You better put the right hand behind it at some point to slow him down. There was an uppercut landed there by Garcia. Prescott's corner also told him not to stand still. Anytime Prescott stops, he gets punched. The left forearm, not exactly a shiver, but it does create the space Garcia wants. Yeah, the jab can help you survive in this kind of fight. But the right hand has to be there for you to win. And that's one of the decisions that Prescott has to wrestle with, has to decide on. At this point in the fight, am I going to win or am I going to last? And believe me, those thoughts are traveling around in his head right now. You can hear Bernardo with the translation. Prescott's corner seemed to think that Garcia might be ready to go. Not sure where they got that from. No, listen, I told you before, and I remember you said you love when I call people liars. Trainers are liars. They lie to you. And I'm not knocking them. It's a good way. They're trying to keep his confidence up. So you lied as a trainer back in the day? I fibbed. <laughs> you fibbed, okay. So I'm swelling under the right eye now of Garcia. Still enough time where that could bother him. That corner needs to get that end swell going when he gets back there. And that swelling under the right eye is put there by the jab of Prescott. And there's a right hand by Prescott. The right hand I've been calling for. The right hand we talked about in the fight plan. The right hand that's necessary if you're going to win this fight, if you're Prescott, that's going to slow down Garcia. Garcia talking trash in Spanish there. Garcia does speak English, even though he was born in Mexico, telling Prescott to come on. Garcia would love Prescott to let his hands go. That creates more openings and opportunities for him. This is where you can blow around. Not a bad round for Prescott, but laying on those ropes, you can give it back fast. And there was a good jab from Prescott. Snap Garcia's head back. And again, spots with Prescott. Don't miss them. Spots with that right hand. Ten seconds to go. Still could go either way this round. By just for men. Right hand around the glove. Sometimes you want to throw it straight, sometimes you want to throw it crooked. The crooked one got there, and then the hook got there too. And that saliva got all the way here on us. It's been a rough night for us, huh? Blood on the paper, and whoa, and the quick flash knockdown. And Garcia saying, wait a second, he stepped on my foot. Either way, it takes a point from Garcia. It's going to be at least a 10-8 round here unless something dramatic happens. And that gives Prescott some life here. You can see he's got more pep in his step. Garcia's right eye is really swollen now, beginning to close. We talked about in the fight plan. We talked about it in the last few rounds. What did Prescott need? The corner kept saying jab, but I said right hand. And that was the courtesy of a right hand by Prescott that has made this fight all the more interesting right now. And maybe a little desperate now for Garcia, or at least a feeling of some tightness that Garcia might not have been feeling up to this point. Prescott may have needed something dramatic, and he got it with that knockdown. 
And those of you scoring on our Friday Night Fights Facebook page through six rounds had it dead even. And if the judges here ringside agree with you, that knockdown could be the difference in this fight. What answer does Garcia have now? Blood trickling from the nose of Garcia now. Stop, stop, stop. That's a little bit of a flop. I know he posted, him, but I hope the referee doesn't fall for it. Because Prescott went down kind of easy. Get over it, get over it, get over it. Good job by the ref. Now it's up to Garcia to try to turn this 10-8 round to a 10-9 round by closing the gap and dominating late. And maybe getting rid of that 10-8 round. It's very rare that you see that. It has to be a very dominating second half of the round, and it hasn't been thus far for Garcia. But he is landing punches. Anytime Prescott stops moving, it's Garcia's fight. Again, the Sunday punch for Prescott, or the Friday punch for Prescott, the right hand. If he's going to win this fight, yeah, I know you talk about the jab, but it's going to be courtesy of that right hand, or a great deal to do with that right hand. It was the right hand that knocked out Amir Khan in his biggest win by far to date. So here we go as we head to the 10th and final round. Let's take a look at that knockdown. Garcia was complaining he was tripped. Let's see. Right hand, clean, <laughs> right down the middle. There was no, not even close to being a trip. Yeah, the jab does set it up. The jab does set it up. Blinds him. And the right hand right down the middle. He never saw that right hand. Watch. The jab blinds him. And then the right hand, bang. Full extension. You see the back turn of Prescott into that punch. Textbook punch. You turn into it. You pivot on your foot. And you get your power there. He drove. Garcia's chin right into his chest. It probably happened so quick, Garcia thought, wait, what happened? He must have stepped on my foot. But it was certainly a clean knockout, as clean a knockdown as you can get. Tenth and final round. It could all come down to this. Three minutes to go. Roberto Garcia, red, white, and blue trunks. Greatest Prescott wearing white and green. And you know Garcia is going to bring the pressure in this round. Both corners have to be telling their fighters it could go either way. It still looks pretty fresh here in the 10th round. I know, Teddy, you said that this might be the round that Garcia eventually wears Prescott down. Prescott, perhaps buoyed by the knockdown he scored in the ninth, still looks good, bouncing up and down, hopping around in there. Yeah, I got my trump card, though. Before that, I said he's going to go the rounds. You did. You covered yourself. Yeah, yeah I did. I covered myself. Right now... Garcia needs to cover himself if he's concerned about that 10 8 round. I got Garcia still ahead, but you can see he's doing his thing, which is come forward, throw those looping shots, hope to catch Prescott on the end of him. Prescott needs to do more than what he was doing earlier. Pat using the legs, and not just the jab, but the right hand spots. To hold off this rush of Garcia. You're not going to get the power punch now from Prescott because he's not set. Right now he's in survival mode. He's not set. He needs to be set really to get that, as I said, his favorite punch to really be destructive in the way he wants it to be destructive with that right hand. Right now it looks like Prescott has a lot of problems. You know, he's surviving. He's surviving. He's certainly not, not fighting like a man who believes he has to win the 10th round because he's not winning. And now it's Prescott 
trying to take down. And that saves time. That tells me that's the polygraph test, the lie detective test. That tells me Prescott had problems. No matter what he might tell you, he's tired, he feels that he's under siege, and he just bought himself some time. I don't know if he bought himself enough time, because man, oh man, Garcia is really ripping into him. And here we go, 20 seconds left. Can Garcia get that knockout as Prescott again with the bear hug? Ten seconds left. Big round for Garcia. Prescott raises his hands like he knows he's won the fight. His corner celebrating too. I'm not so sure. The official decision from our main event when Friday Night Fights returns. Welcome back to Friday Night Fights. Olbermann will be starting momentarily, but first the decision from a very entertaining end to our main event. Both camps talking trash in the ring right now. They both feel their fighter won the fight. Teddy, you went with Garcia, 96-93. So too did our fans at home. They have it six rounds to four. Here is our official decision. Let's send it up to Michael Vale. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Mario DiFiore scores about 96-93. Judge Mike Fitzgerald scores about 95-94, and Judge Pat Morley scores about 96-92. For your winner by unanimous decision, Roberto La Menaza Garcia. The knockdown was not enough, apparently, Teddy. And yeah, that's the right decision. I mean, for the most part, Garcia was the guy bringing the heat, bringing the thunder, bringing the pain. And I guess most importantly in professional scoring, landing the harder punches. He had more pressure and more power for the most part, even though Greatest Prescott scored the only knockdown. Next week will be in Shelton, Washington, Thomas Williams Jr. and Gabriel Campillo, also Andre Durrell on the card. For Teddy Atlas, Bernardo Asuna, and our entire crew, I'm Todd Grisham. Oberman is next.